Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm Mimi, and as today is the last day of Hanukkah, I thought we might take a look into the history of our Jewish Thomas County citizens. If you live in or visit Thomasville regularly, you may have come across this building while driving around. B'nai Israel Synagogue can be found at 210 South Crawford Street, across from St. Thomas Episcopal Church. It's a very ecumenical area. In 1997, the temple was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. So what's the history of this building? And who worshipped here? Let's look through some sources and find out a little more. Some of the first Europeans to settle in the colony of Georgia were Jewish. In 1733, many arrived in Savannah, escaping persecution in Spain, where the Catholic monarchy was forcing conversions and exiling Jewish citizens. Thomasville wouldn't be founded for almost another century, but as soon as it was, some early Jewish settlers arrived. Over time, more and more European immigrants, including Jewish people, arrived in Thomasville after escaping from their war-torn homelands. Many of these immigrants started businesses in Thomas County towns, while others started their own farms. Unfortunately, life wasn't always hunky-dory between Jewish and Gentile Thomas Countyans. In 1862, the Civil War was putting pressure on everyone in Thomasville, causing scarcity and soaring prices on necessary goods. Immigration from Germany wasn't helping the situation, and a group of men in Thomasville gathered together to find a solution, a not-so-friendly solution. They condemned Jewish immigrants of fixing prices and using fake money in town, and extended their blame unto well-established Jewish citizens as well, calling for their removal from the county. When word got out about this plan, it did not go over well, and the threat of expulsion was quelled. As often happens, though, people can be quick to forget, and by the latter half of the 1800s, newspaper clippings talked favorably about the local Jewish population and their events. Speaking of newspaper clippings, much of our understanding about the history of Judaism in Thomas County has been discovered through newspaper articles. Here's an interesting clipping from the Thomasville Times Enterprise. In 1915, the Goldberg family of Meggs celebrated a bris, or circumcision ceremony, for their newborn son David. They invited quite a lot of friends and family, which led the newspaper to call Meggs a New Jerusalem due to the amount of Jewish people gathered in the area. Other newspaper clippings reveal the active ladies group, the Sisters of Zion, who held several fundraisers for the Thomasville Synagogue and other charitable organizations, as well as the many businesses run by Jewish families throughout the county, some of which we can still see evidence of today. Just take a look in downtown Thomasville and you may notice some Jewish family names, like this building on the corner of Broad Street and Jackson that bears the name Steyerman the owners of the business for several decades. But what about that beautiful building I mentioned earlier? Well, for many years, there were only a few Jewish families in Thomas County, many of whom gathered together with family to worship. Like other local denominations with low member numbers and no physical church building, traveling rabbis would visit occasionally to perform solemn ceremonies and rites within the Jewish community. However, by the 1870s, more and more Jewish people were moving to our area, and the local Jewish community wanted to form their own official place of worship. This was a common theme among many other religious groups at the time. As wealthy northern visitors came to Thomasville, they required churches and temples to celebrate and worship their faith, beyond the already established Baptist, Methodist, and Presbyterian churches. But a harsh reality rang true for all of them. You need money to build a building. For the Jewish folks of Thomas County, that meant finding a temporary home. The first one was on the second floor of the Masonic Hall, which still stands today on the corner of Broad and Remington in Thomasville. Around 1880, the mini synagogue was moved into the second floor of the Thomasville Library on Crawford Street, about where the fire station and municipal auditorium stand today. Glowing newspaper articles describe the setup and the dedication program held at the library synagogue. The first thing that attracted our attention upon entering was the handsome, and might we say elegant, manner in which the synagogue is furnished. Seats, stand, organ, chandeliers, lamps, carpets, and everything are handsome, and of the latest styles. Beside the stand were the seven golden candlesticks, and in a rear recess formed in the wall representing the ark. This, together with the stand, tables, etc., 
were tastefully festooned and decorated with flowers, arranged by the deft fingers a woman alone can give. The walls and arched ceiling are snow white, and with twenty-six brilliant jets, the room was as radiant as the noonday sun. Eventually, the congregation outgrew the library and raised enough money to build an official synagogue. They bought property on Crawford Street in 1913 and hired Henry Atkinson as their contractor. In less than a year, the synagogue was totally finished. With its rounded arches over the windows and thick brick facade, the synagogue was designed in the latest fashion of the day, although this is a revival style of the Romanesque, which was popular in the early Middle Ages. Keeping with the idea of what's old is new again, the synagogue was made with Orthodox services in mind by including a machissa, or balcony, for the female members of the congregation to sit separately from the men. But with most of their services being of the Reformed type, they included a piano as well. On August 19, 1913, the Thomasville Band led a procession from the library, where Temple had been held for over 30 years, to the new synagogue just a few buildings down the street. The acting rabbi carried the sacred text while shaded by a tent above. Behind him came the men, women, and children of the congregation, along with several members of the community, from the mayor to friends and onlookers. The scrolls were placed in the Ark of the New Synagogue, where they remain today, over 100 years later. Today is the last day of Hanukkah, so let's look back at a Hanukkah celebration at B'nai Israel Synagogue. This event took place December 5, 1920, 101 years ago, almost to the day. Someone at the newspaper got a little poetic and wrote that the word Hanukkah means to have courage, although most translations actually point towards the word meaning to dedicate, but I won't argue with the reporter. The article goes on to describe the ceremony. The synagogue was beautifully decorated in the Jewish national colors of blue and white, using a number of pot plants at the altar, with quantities of roses and chrysanthemums, which added to the beauty of the decoration. The opening number of the program was America, sung by the children. Following that, the Jewish national anthem song, Hatikva, was sung. Twelve children slowly marched to the altar, carrying the American flag and the Jewish national flag of blue and white. A Hanukkah sketch was then played by ten children. Delicious refreshments were then served. If you're interested in learning more about the Jewish community or other cultural institutions in Thomas County, be sure to check out the Thomasville History Center, where we have plenty of images and fascinating news articles to sift through. Thanks for listening, and happy holidays from the museum.